Tech Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. Hello, I'm Frank Gruber with Tech.co, and I'm here with Mark Rowland. He's got a, a new announcement here that just came out, and we wanted to talk to him about it. It's an exciting uh, new, new thing that's happening. So, Mark, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on? Sure. Um, so, I've just been appointed as the um, CEO, effectively, of DTP Ventures, which is a, an entity that's been created as part of the downtown project um, to help provide a little structure to the, to the actual project itself. Um, so the downtown project as a project is, um, is very broad, very all-encompassing, and you know, it's the vision of Tony Shea and, and Fred Mosler to actually create um, this project for downtown, to create a whole new, essentially a whole new ecosystem that exists and community that exists within downtown. That covers um, real estate, it covers a whole bunch of private investments, a school that we have, um, turntable health, primary health care to, to, the, to the location of downtown Vegas. Um, we've got a whole bunch of Vegas tech fund investments, there's about 85 investments in the Vegas tech fund, we've got 85 investments in the small business fund, we've got um, a ton of special projects, and there's a, a lot of stuff that goes into the downtown project. Mm -hmm. And then DTP Ventures really only has the uh, the support office. There's mm -hmm. about 50 people that work out of the support office, okay. which operates on Bridges Street. We've also got the uh, wholly owned entities of the downtown project, mm -hmm. things like the Gold Spike, Container right. Park, the Market, Perch, et cetera. Mm -hmm. What I saw was 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 something that was missing from from the community was just a little bit more structure around mm -hmm. the, the act, what is the downtown project and what right. are these entities. There's a lot of confusion between is, mm -hmm. you know, is Tony, Tony running the downtown project? Is he not running the downtown project? There's right. just all this stuff going around. Mm -hmm. I think a little bit of structure was needed. Mm -hmm. So Tony's the visionary, the funder, um, the creator of the downtown project. Along with Fred too, right? Along with Fred. Yeah. And you couldn't, no one can be the CEO of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so Tony and Fred exist at that level. But then the structure that I think I thought was was certainly needed was just helping to mold the culture of this team of people. Mm -hmm. There's 50 people that work mm -hmm. within this entity, right. um, helping to support the actual community itself. Mm -hmm. So all the businesses that we have, right. you know, there's there's uh, all the restaurants and the retail outlets and mm -hmm. the service facilities that we have here. So just for someone to rally rally everyone together mm -hmm. to provide a common vision. But we do want this to be like a self-managed sort of entity, as opposed to it being a very hierarchical one. So even though it's got a title of CEO, I won't be using that. What's your What's your given title that you give yourself? I, I'm going to be the community actualizer. Where does like uh, Michael Downs fit into that situation? So Michael is part of the support office. Okay. Um, so we have an operations team. So he was like COO or what was his role? Executive vice president of okay. operations. Right. Okay. Um, so he's been very, very hands-on supporting all Lovely. of these entities and helping things get started, mm -hmm. um, as has everybody in that support office. Right. So what we're going to try and do is just make sure that we, we continue to do that mm -hmm. and provide as much support as we can to, to all these entities that we, that okay. we actually have. There's a lot of, always a lot of questions around Tony's role and Fred's role. So just let's clear the air. What is, what is their role in, in, this, in this new so world? So their role has and always will be, yeah. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, the, the visionary, um, the funding behind the downtown project, Correct. the spirit behind it, um, the culture behind it. Mm -hmm. um, that has never changed. Mm -hmm. And when Tony said that he wasn't the CEO, he didn't mean he was stepping down from being the CEO of the downtown project. But there isn't, there's never has been a CEO of the downtown project. No, I don't, don't think could there be. Right. But we've created this entity which allows us to have a CEO type role mm -hmm. within this this new entity that we've just sort of created. Okay, so you've been the CEO of Rocketeer now for almost it's about a year and a half now. Yeah. So how do, how does this role affect that? Are you gonna what are you gonna do with that? So personally, I will have a dual role of um, CEO of DTB Ventures and CEO of Rocketeer. Mm -hmm. um, but within Rocketeer, we also we have four full time employees. Mm -hmm. So they will be continuing to do the Rocketeer work, and I will mm -hmm. just be in a dual capacity. So Rocketeer was created to provide coaching, mentoring, and training support to this right. entire community. Right. Um, so in, in essence, the role of DTP Ventures is kind of similar mm -hmm. to that overarching Rocketeer role. Right. So even as whether I'm acting as CEO of Rocketeer or CEO of DTP Ventures, I think there'll be a lot of overlap in terms of mm -hmm. the actual role and what it is. Right. So I don't see myself stopping from um, supporting all the, all the companies that we work with. And DTP was never supposed to be exclusive to like alienating anybody. It was, mm -hmm. There's a ton of investments that have been made to create an infrastructure right. downtown. Mm -hmm. The analogy that I always give it is um, what Tony did was he built, a, he built an iPhone. Mm -hmm. 
and he built five or six really cool apps. Mm -hmm. But for the for the mass population to think the iPhone is awesome, we need a ton of other developers. We need to open source it. We need to get all these other people building cool apps too, which will then attract even more people. Right. And that's that's been my intention mm -hmm. um, as to what this community was all about. And I've never seen that change. I know a lot of what's been written about it. Um, to the contrary, but it's always been my perception that mm. this is a very all-encompassing, open-armed community. Very open. The, the downtown lowdown, as an example, is anyone can go. <laughs> it's not. Right. Yeah. There's no exclusivity there. Right. But there's definitely a perception of us versus them that I've I've seen with some people. So we've got to get rid of that mm -hmm. perception mm -hmm. and welcome more people in and try and get downtown even more vibrant. So just to, so everyone's clear, you, you've got <laughs> Vegas Tech Fund. You've got uh, the Small Business Fund. You've got you know some of the private investments that they've made. Um, you've also got this real estate fund. Um, can you explain how this new DTP Ventures uh, kind of fits into that kind of setup? I mean, sure. Do you manage all of them? Do they kind of work, work on their own, or how does that look? Underneath the umbrella, we yeah. have DTP Ventures. Okay. Which so DTP Ventures That's is you. this. I'm the CEO of that company. Correct. Um, okay. There's a. Support office team of around about 50 people. Gotcha. There are the wholly owned entities, which are Gold Spike, the Container yep. Park, Market, Perch, mm -hmm. uh, the Hostel, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's one little unit. Outside of that, outside of my remit of CEO, then exists all the investments that have been made. So right. 85 small businesses, 80, right. 80 odd yeah. um, VTF investments. Right. There's a ton of uh, private investments that Tony's made as well. Yeah. So they're they're all outside of right. like my mandate as the CEO. Right. But within that mandate, we mm -hmm. also have a support role, so we so, can help those, but we don't control them. Okay. So with the term ventures tacked on to DTP, that's going to bring questions about oh, are you know is that a, a new fund? Are you investing you know now in, in new things? Like it's going to add those kinds of questions. Can you kind of clear you know add some clarity around what that sure. looks like and what that means? So, well, I think for me anyway, the reason why I think venture yeah. fits mm -hmm. is that this whole thing is our venture. Right. I mean, I don't I don't know of too many other places on earth where this type of a thing has actually happened. There's 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 a bunch of similar projects mm -hmm. um, going on. Yeah. But the essence of what is being tried here in Vegas mm -hmm. is is a huge venture. It's a huge undertaking. It's very mm -hmm. pioneering. Yeah. So I think the term venture fits in that capacity. Um, Within DTP Ventures itself, mm -hmm. we have these wholly owned entities, so we've already invested in a ton of things. Mm -hmm. And we want to now help those to, to really achieve their fruition, um, be the best that they can be, to have the goal spike be the best that it can be, the market, the mm -hmm. container pack, etc. We also, within DTP Ventures, provide some infrastructure to the funds, mm -hmm. so the Small Business Fund and the Vegas Tech Fund. Okay. But I just want to be clear that DTP Ventures doesn't make any um, investment decisions on behalf of the Vegas Tech Fund. Or the Small Business Fund? Um, or? Well, the Small Business Fund kind of isn't, is, is within DTP Ventures because Don Welch is the, is the guy that makes the decisions on those things. Right. And he is within our support office. Got it. Um, but we don't, make, you know, we don't advise Tony on any private investments that he should make. We don't advise right. Tony or Fred or Zach or Will Young on which investments VTF should make. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that there won't ever be any more. No. Right. So, so if, there if could opportunities be a, come up, then right. I think everyone will just will sort of analyze the as merit of the investment as it comes. Okay. So it's not a fund. You haven't go out. And, you haven't gone out and raised additional funds outside of the 350 million that we hear no. a lot about. Um, that and that's, but that's not to say that that couldn't exist. Right. But it's not our intention right now. It's been a, a, a bit of a national kind of trying to get people to check out what's happening and. And you know some folks have moved here for small business or for you know the, the Vegas Tech Fund, and um, we're seeing some of those folks have you know grown and you know exploded and you know stayed here. Others have you know it hasn't worked out or decided that it wasn't right for them and moved on. Where do you see you fitting into that kind of flow? The biggest challenge that I see for just for downtown Vegas right. in general is actually convincing people to come here. Mm. So still a whole a huge population of Vegas that has not yet been downtown, has not seen the transformation, is still thinking that downtown right. is like it was. Wow. And it wasn't a very nice place to come. I mean, right. I came here three, four years ago, and right. it, I wouldn't want to bring my kids here. Right. Whereas now I, I leave my kids at Container Park playing on the slide for an hour while I have a drink. It's right. very different. Totally different, yeah. But the majority of the population of Las Vegas probably doesn't even realize that yet. So it's a so perception the, problem. For, definitely a perception for problem. For locals or for? I think for locals as well as for visitors. Okay. Um, there's a whole bunch of the feeder cities that come into Vegas. I mean, mm -hmm. Vegas has, what is it, 40 million people a year come into Vegas wow. every year. Um, 
That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So trying to convince some of those to come downtown as well. I was at CES, well, a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and bumped into a guy who told me that five years ago he was told never to walk past the stratosphere from the strip. <laughs> that was the end point. If you yeah, walk past there, you're right taking your life yeah. into your own hands. Right, right. It's clearly not that way now, but there's still a perception with visitors, there's a mm-hmm. perception with residents. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a big aim of, of, I think, what we try and do. Mm-hmm. And then on the, I guess, on the people coming in, people going out, mm-hmm. I mean, definitely this project is a bit of a chicken and egg thing. Mm. Would you convince people to live downtown Vegas or come to downtown Vegas if you didn't do some of the investments that have been made? That would be a stretch. Right. But just by doing some of these investments, does it guarantee people will come? Well, clearly no. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, build, you build a private school, now you've got to find people to actually come into the private school. Does right. anyone live in this community that would want to put their kids in a private school? Mm-hmm. Maybe not yet, right. or not enough. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a, definitely this whole sort of chicken and egg um, but on the, on the side of one of the things to create an entrepreneurial environment, to create mm-hmm. this sort of city where there's a lot of creativity and innovation and this mm-hmm. serendipity that creates all these amazing things, yeah. you need creative and innovative people. Right. Those people did not exist in this community. Right. So I think some of the investments that the Vegas Tech Fund made was mm-hmm. literally just bringing in talent mm-hmm. from elsewhere and elsewhere across the country. Right. Um, all the speaker series that happened, the Catalyst Creative, right. the Tech Cocktail events yep. have brought in people from all over the world. I mean, right. I came here off the back of you know coming to a Tech Cocktail event right. two years ago. Yep. So all these people have come in. Mm-hmm. Some of them have come in and gone immediately. Yeah. Some of them have subscribed to Vegas and come back quite regularly. Some of them have actually moved here right. and given it a go. Mm-hmm. There's, it's just natural in any community, I think, that people come in and they stay and mm-hmm. then they go. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you want people to stay as long as possible if, right. if they choose to. Right. But um, And I think also one of the things that I've noticed, especially on the tech side, is there isn't a ton of infrastructure in Las Vegas mm-hmm. for a company. Mm-hmm. So once you get past the initial seed stage that you might have got the Vegas Tech Fund to have invested in you, and now you're growing and you're looking for additional investment, right. There aren't necessarily all those investors here in Las Vegas. Right. So the investment might exist in San Francisco or Boston or New York. Right. And then those investors might say, hey, we'd really like you to move to Boston so we can so it's be easier to walk to your closer office. to you. <laughs> you know, right. if I was an, well, I've been an entrepreneur. If, if, if that happened to me, if someone said, hey, I'll invest $5 million in your company as long as you move your company to Boston. That's tough to turn down. I think I'd move my company to Boston. Right. But those, those, those things will just always happen. That's, right. just, that's just normal. What we need to do in mm-hmm. Vegas now is make sure we've got that flow Mm -hmm. of of, of people coming through. Mm -hmm. I I am sure, I am convinced there are people that live in Las Vegas that could be a fantastic entrepreneur that maybe don't even know that they could be an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. don't even know how to become an entrepreneur. So one of the things I think we need to do is is get that grassroots program going. And Mm -hmm. I think that's where the Founder Institute we're trying to set up in Vegas could could really help Mm -hmm. to just to show people how how easy it is to become an entrepreneur, test their business case, build, mm-hmm. a, build a model cam- a business canvas, mm-hmm. get some initial funding, mm-hmm. whether it's from the mill or from VTF or mm-hmm. from Rebel Venture Funds or Vegas Valley Angels or wherever, wherever it might be, yeah. just to fill in that gap. Because it was, it, what Tony did to create the initial buzz and yeah. the initial influx of people mm-hmm. um, is gonna be difficult to sustain in that right. form. For us at the moment, it's there's been a lot of activity, a lot of stuff done, and then we just gotta try and make sure that they work. <laughs> that makes yeah, that makes sense. And in making sure that each all those investments are successful, right? Great. Well, thank you so much for your Welcome. time. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay.